G'day. In today's video, I'll be doing a review on the ASUS TUF FX505DU. This one has a Ryzen 7 3750H, 32 gig of RAM in dual channel mode, a GTX 1660 Ti 6GB model, and a 512 gig NVMe drive. So to begin with, let's have a look at the screen. Here's the screen it opened at maximum viewing angle. The panel in here is a 1920 by 1080 resolution. It runs at 120 hertz, and it's also an IPS level panel. So the display from most viewing angles on this is perfectly acceptable. It is of the lower tiered, so don't expect high quality color accuracy. But if you just want something to game on, this will work perfectly fine. Looking at the back of the machine, it does have a bit of gamer flair to it, which personally, I'm not a fan of huge over-the-top gaming cases, covers, colors, so it's relatively plain. As you can see, the ASUS logo does have a slight reflection to it, but when it's getting used at nighttime or in a dark room, the ASUS logo lights up a bit of a shade of orange, which this one is not controllable. The quality of the webcam is pretty much on par with what I see in most gaming laptops, which it's not overly something that I'd find that great, but it's usable if you had to. The charger itself is fairly large, but the length of the actual cables themselves are rather good, so there's usually no issue plugging into the wall in the machine, especially when you've got a bit of a distance away from it. Looking at the left hand side of the machine, we have the speaker grill, headphone jack, two USB 3s, a USB 2 port, HDMI, gigabit ethernet, and DC jack in. So basically if you're a left hand mouse user, I feel very sorry for you on this machine. Looking over it on the right hand side, we have one speaker grill, vent, and lock. So really no I.O. on the right hand side of the machine at all. So I was just looking at it from the bottom. Speaker grill 1 and speaker grill 2. So that does it for the I.O. on this machine. The keys I find to be perfectly good. I like the, the travel they have on the keys themselves. The spacing of them and the layout seems to be pretty much spot on with what I prefer. So personally I don't have many issues with it. The biggest issue I did have was getting the RGB lighting to function on here, which after a fresh install of Windows took me about two hours to finally get the right software on there for me to be able to manually control the RGB. So in this clip here I've just got it cycling through the various colours. And this is the software that's included. So we've got the Armory or Armory Crate, a Zeus Armory Crate. And from there, you can select a few different basic functions of what you want to do. And then from there as well, you can also set your performance of the machine, which personally I really didn't notice too much difference apart from fan noise between the various modes. And lastly, let's check out some performance of this machine. So right now I've got running Fortnite with everything set on high which the performance of this machine was a little bit underwhelming. I'm not too sure if it's the CPU holding it back the most, being that it's got a GTX 1660 Ti in there. But it seemed to average between about 70 and 80 FPS on Fortnite on high. Other games are fairly similar. Counter-Strike Global Offensive I'm getting usually between about 90 to 120 FPS on medium to high graphics. And Rainbow Six Siege, on medium to high, produces a similar FPS. Actually a bit slightly better, as it's a bit more demanding on the GPU, as opposed to the CPU, which Counter-Strike normally is. One of the disappointments I've had with this machine is I've been trying to figure out how to get maximum battery life out of it. And at the moment, it seems to be just simply doing YouTube playback over wireless. It does perform fairly bad with the battery life seem to be maxing out at about two and a half to 
close between two and a half and three hours, which is a little bit disappointing. So if you're wanting this for schoolwork and trying to get through a school day or uni, it's sadly not really gonna make it through that day. I've tried adjusting the refresh rate of the screen, dropping that down to 120 hertz, running various power modes, which all not really extending the battery, if at all. But if you exclude battery life out of here and you're permanently running it on power, how does it go? I find that on most games it goes very well. If you could pick this up second hand for a decent price, it may very well be worth it. As I did, I picked this one up second hand off eBay for around about a thousand AUD, which I think is around about six, between six to seven hundred USD. And for that price, I was rather happy with it, especially with most machines with a 1660 Ti costing anywhere from about 1300, 1400 AUD and higher. So for that aspect, I find it very, very good value for money. Another weird thing I do find with the machine, or have found, is that the fan profile is very odd. For example, I'll be playing Fortnite or Call of Duty, and the fan will max out, it will, max, it will be running full speed, flat out for a couple of minutes, and then all of a sudden it will just dip down. And the fan will either kick down to a very low RPM or off, and then after about 10, 15 seconds it will ramp straight back up again. The constant fan stop, stopping and starting is probably more annoying than having it running at a slightly reduced rate. So that would be something that you could potentially tweak with a manual fan controller. But if you're after a cheap machine, the Zeus Tough from last year, the 2019 edition, very well may be worth it, as I find the 3750H to be fairly comparable to the Intel i5-9300H and in turn the 10300H. It wouldn't be really comparable to an i7, but if you're competing against an i5, it's very comparable. Otherwise, you'd be looking at the newer Zeus Tufts, which have the 4600H as a base processor, which is considerably more powerful than what this one is. But then you're also paying that cost. So anyway, that's my thoughts on my new, or my second hand, a Zeus Tough FX505 DU. I hope this helps you, and I'll see you later. Bye.